Hello students of marriage and kinship and welcome back. Today we're talking about Lewis Henry Morgan's systems of consanguinity and affinity of the human family. And if you've been with us so far, you're not scared by this title, you know what it means. First up, I want to show you a quote. This should look terribly familiar to you from our lecture and our reading of Schneider. The family relationships are as ancient as the family. They exist in virtue of the law of derivation, which is expressed by the perpetuation of the species through consanguinity, which is founded upon the marriage relation. So people get married, they have babies, those babies are then related to their parents and to each other by blood, and that's it. That's what kinship is. Morgan goes on to say, a system of a community of blood is but the formal expression and recognition of these relationships. So these relationships are just the natural outcome of sex and childbirth, but we develop it into formal systems. This quote should also look familiar too, if you did all of the Schneider reading. A formal arrangement of the more immediate blood kindred, a formal arrangement of the people that you're closest to, into lines of descent, parents and children, right? With the adoption of some method to distinguish one relative from another and to express the value of the relationship, how important it is, how close you might be that, to that person, would be one of the earliest acts of human intelligence. Okay, so who is Lewis Henry Morgan and why do we care about him? He was a 19th century anthropologist whose primary research was on the Iroquois, a native people from the northeast coast of what we now call the United States. Along the way to researching all kinds of things about their culture, he found out some stuff about kinship, namely that Native Americans speaking completely unrelated nonetheless had similar kinship terms. If you have two related languages, like say Russian and Polish, or Kazakh and Uzbek, you would not be surprised if people had similar kinship systems. But if you have a language like Korean, and then a language like Kazakh, and the kinship systems turned out to be the same, then you might be really, really surprised. So he found that the words that people were using, but the structure was the same. By the way, just to note, by a kinship system, I am talking about the linguistic question of what you actually call your relatives. And more specifically, the question of which relatives you call by the same kin terms and which relatives receive different kin terms. So in English, my siblings are my brother and my sister, and it doesn't matter if they're older or younger than me, it's the same term. But in Japanese, there are different words for older sister and younger sister and older brother and younger brother. In English, the children of all of my parents' siblings are all my cousins. We just have this huge mass of cousins in English. But in another language, it might matter which parent's sibling my cousins are the children of. I might call them something different. There might be different kinds of cousins. And just a quick question, systems of consanguinity and affinity of the human family, um, you can find the whole book online, it's really old, it's in the public domain. It contains data from language groups all over the world. How did Morgan acquire this data? The answer is male plus colonization and missionaries. Morgan posted his survey to colonial officials and Christian missionaries around the globe, asking them to fill out the survey with reference to the local languages and mail them back to him. And a lot of people actually did. All right, moving on. 
let's look at English kinship terms. And we're going to come back to this slide in a minute. I mostly want you to pay attention to this blank triangle in the middle labeled ego. Ego is the person at the center of a kin chart. Kinship terms, after all, are relative. My mother is my mother, but to my aunt, my mother is her sister, right? So who we put at the center of the chart matters. Morgan says, every system of consanguinity must be able to ascend and descend in the lineal line through several degrees from any given person. So you need to be able to ascend up to at least, you know, grandparents, great grandparents, descend to grandchildren, great grandchildren, and to specify the relationship of all of these people to ego. And also from the lineal, from the direct line of ascent and descent, to enter the several collateral lines and follow and describe the collateral relatives through several generations. Very quickly, some definitions. Your lineal relatives are those in the direct line of ascent or descent. So parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. These are lineal relatives. And if you look at a kinship chart, literally there's a line in the middle from ego that goes up and down with the lineal relatives. Collateral relatives literally means relatives who are off to the side. They are your brothers and your sisters and their descendants in every generation. So your parents, brothers and sisters, your aunts and uncles are collateral relatives. Your cousins, the children of your parents, brothers and sisters are collateral relatives. Um, the siblings of your grandparents our collateral relatives, and so on. Okay, so here are our English kinship terms again. And as you look at this, now that we've talked a little bit about some of these definitions, a question that I have for you that I want to hear your answers to is, how does English kinship terminology handle lineal and collateral Relatives, how does it deal with them? How are relatives grouped into, well, groups or singled out as special individuals? And just so we can see how English works in comparison to other systems, I have a couple other systems that I want to show you as well. So here are Yanomamo kinship terms. The Yanomamo are a native South American people. Just ponder this. How do they seem to be arranged? What's the logic here? And now let us look at Hawaiian kinship terminology. So again, take a moment, pause the lecture. What's the logic here? For now, the main difference that I want you to notice is how many relatives are grouped under the same kin term in each of these three systems. And Morgan divided kinship systems into two overarching types. He had some finer distinctions. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to worry about the two overarching types of kinship systems that he found. So. The first he called descriptive, which describes collateral blood relatives for the most part by an augmentation or combination of the primary terms of relationship. These terms, the primary terms, are thus restricted to the primary sense in which they are here employed. So your father is your father. Nobody else is your father. Your grandfather is your father's father, right? Your child is your child. Nobody else is your child. Your grandchild is your child's child. So you have basic kin terms that are very restricted in their meaning. And if you need to describe somebody else in the line of ascent or descent, you can just add an extra term for that. And that's, that's it. 
the other kind of kinship system is what Morgan called classificatory. Classificatory systems, according to him, reduce blood relatives to great classes by a series of apparently arbitrary generalizations. It thus confounds relationships which under the descriptive system are distinct. Um, so Morgan seems to have been a little bit biased in favor of the English descriptive system, because English, of course, has the descriptive system. However, Morgan did talk about benefits and drawbacks to each of these two types of kinship systems. So he says that in the descriptive system, the collateral lines are maintained distinct and perpetually divergent from the lineal, which results theoretically as well as practically in a dispersion of the blood. So what he's saying is your lineal relatives are kind of the most special in a descriptive system. They're the ones that have these very distinct special terms and all of your collateral relatives, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, they're kind of off to the side. They're all grouped into these. Like I said, in English, you have a big mass of cousins and maybe you don't feel as close to them. You are only thinking about your lineal relatives and you have a dispersion of the blood. You lose track of all these other people that you're related to. On the contrary, for the classificatory systems, he says the several collateral lines, near and remote, are finally brought into and merged in the lineal line, thus theoretically, if not practically, preventing a dispersion of the blood. The relationships of collaterals by this means is both appreciated and preserved. What this means is, maybe you looked at the Yanomamo kinship chart and you noticed that not only do you call your father father, but you call your father's brother father. And not only do you call your mother mother, but you call your mother's sister mother. Maybe by grouping the mother and the mother's sister together and the father and the father's brother together and calling them all father and mother, maybe you're closer to these relatives. Maybe you don't lose track of your collateral relatives. In the Yanomamo system, the children of your mother's sister, who you also call mother, and your father's brother, who you also call father, their children you call brother and sister. And so again, maybe you're closer to them because you're calling them by the same terms as your lineal siblings. To sum up all of this, the descriptive system keeps lineal collateral relatives distinct, and it privileges relationships of descent. By contrast, the classificatory system does not clearly distinguish between lineal and collateral relatives and does not privilege relationships of descent as clearly. However, again, if you go back and look at the Yanomamo kinship chart and the Hawaiian kinship chart, you can see that distinctions among generation might still be made and distinctions between the mother's and the father's side of the family may still be made. So this is what I have to say about Morgan. Next time, we're going to be talking in detail about different types of kinship systems more specifically and how you might represent these in chart form.